in this video, I'd like to talk about Langston Hughes' poem, Let America Be America Again, as seen through the lens of Lauren Berlant's idea about cruel optimism. When considering cruel optimism, we might ask three questions. What is it that we desire? And what happens when the things or people or experiences we desire hurt us? Why would we continue to seek out those objects that hurt us? Berlin talks about objects of desire, and she says that we are really talking about a cluster of promises that we want someone or something to make us and make possible for us. For example, I may say I like chocolate, but what I really like are all the promises associated with the experience of eating chocolate. Maybe promises of a good flavor, um, promises of a shared experiences with friends and family and enjoyment and fun. Um, any of those kinds of things that are associated. That's what I really am searching for um, when I look for chocolate. So let's look at the object um, that we desire in Langston Hughes' poem, Let America Be America Again, and discover the promises that are connected with that object. In this stanza, we read, Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. So the promise here is that the little guy can get ahead, right? And the object that we're looking for, or the object that we desire is the, um, the fulfillment of the American dream, right? Um, unfortunately, this promise that the little guy can get ahead um, is not really a promise that we can um, be sure of. In fact, it is completely false, right? Because this is not always a land of love, and certainly there are times when the little guy is crushed by a tyrant from above, right? So he or she may work and work and work and still not attain this promise. And that is the pain and hardship of uh, cruel optimism, okay? That the desired object, such as the American dream, repeatedly results in negative, even harmful outcomes. Yet we continue to seek out this object or relationship or experience because we still desire and believe in the promises we've assigned, real or imagined, to that object. Let's look at another promise associated with the American dream in this poem. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. So here we see the promise is like the freedom to have a home, uh, a sense of belonging, right? That happens in the American dream. Uh, unfortunately, at the same time, the author admits this has never happened for him, right? America never was America to me. And even at, at the same moment of admitting this, the author is still hoping to recover that which was lost. Um, when he says, let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. How could it used to have been when the author admits that it never has been for him? He's never had America. And this is the paradox here. Something that we think should happen out of some mystical past when it actually did happen, but it didn't ever really happen. Right? America has never, this dream has never actually come to fruition. Uh, another promise here with a barb attached. But opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. How beautiful, right? Uh, however, if opportunity is real in the American dream, um, and I'm a part of that dream, what do I do when I've never seen success? When those opportunities haven't happened for me? Uh, I might think um, that I haven't, I haven't worked hard enough. I need to work harder. And then it's going to happen. Those, those opportunities are going to come. Or maybe I will begin to think, that the American dream is not for me, that it's for somebody else. That's the pain here. Um, so Berlant further explores the pain of this when she says, where cruel optimism operates, the very vitalizing or animating potency of an object or scene of desire contributes to the attrition, the wearing down, of the very thriving that is supposed to be made possible in the work of attachment in the first place. So if we look at this a little closer, the thriving that we might be thinking of, okay, if I'm, for example, climbing the corporate ladder, um, the thriving that I might be considering, the positive outcomes could be that I can spend more time with my family, 
once I've attained success, maybe I can get my kids all of the things that I didn't have as a child, right? Maybe I can enjoy um, life, get live the good life. Unfortunately, if I'm working 70 hours a week to climb the corporate ladder, I'm not going to be able to spend any time with my kids. I'm not going to be able to enjoy the, the objects that I have bought. Um, and I'm not going to see those successes. So, um, unfortunately, the very act of working harder depletes the enjoyment that I should gain by working harder. And this is what Berlin is saying when she's talking about cruel optimism. Here are some other sources that might be helpful or interesting to you as you if you look into the American dream and its association with cruel optimism. Thank you.